I'm not at my usual place right now, so it's kind of echoey because I'm in Ukraine and a rented apartment. So hey, what kind of character concept would you like? Now, I, I realize you're not given a lot of information yeah, as to what but- the campaign's like which is on purpose because when the first player started playing no fucking idea uh, but one of the nice things is after you play one session if you're like oh i want i want to get in on this and shit you have a free rewrite of all of your character that's you know, available to you so if you're like wow this is totally different but on the other hand any kind of character you make somewhere will be very useful yeah i uh, yeah, read that on uh one of the on the advice for newbies is sometimes it's good to take a useless skill because somewhere down the road you'll be a god at it the path you'll be a godsend oh yeah it's it's very true but um you part of the gamble is um when you're coming up with a character concept is picking skills that will be useful often and then like, because uh, while it's good to have outlier skills, you're you're pretty much betting like uh, that a skill comes up a lot. Like on the character sheet, you'll see some of them are bold faced. Some of the skills, like bold faced. Oh yeah, those those are the skills that the players years ago in my campaign said. If you don't have these, you're going to be playing somebody who's severely handicapped. So whatever character concept you come up with, because just taking, like if, if, if you were to take the max of all those skills, which is like 60, um, that's not going to suck up a lot of points. And you still have a big chunk of points to go and play with and come yeah. up with whatever character concept. Because this is the only campaign I know where you could be a 1920s archaeologist or a fucking Star Trek uh, uh, space jock or a fucking um, Bear Grylls survival guy. That's one of the things that was confusing me, is because well, as I've played a lot of D&D and Star Wars RPG, there, before you play the game, you're introduced to a setting or the rules of the world. So you know what to expect and what to build for and mm-hmm. what, what yes. the limitations on your character design is. On There's this, I'm going here. in... Is nothing there, like um, yeah, exactly. I I could put sixty points in. I I could just max out all of the firearms tree, but would I start with a firearm? Yeah, I don't know what start and equipment uh, is and things. This is exactly. There's uh, here's here's a clue. Um, the the world is comprised of many of what I call zones. Uh, it comes from the old days when I was playing EverQuest. Uh, on the PC, oh, and you had all those fucking zones and shit. But the the uh, thing of this is, is that your gear, your age, your parents, all that shit may change from zone to zone. So, so there's no form of permanence other than the sheet. Um, other than your skills, and your skills can actually, like, if they're above eighty percent, if you die, your skills and stats can go down. But on good news is. It's real easy to build up and stuff. I think one of the wisest pieces of information that uh, one of the really experienced players was telling a new guy is that where you start your character, where you think your character is going, may not be anywhere close to where it was. Like, for example, one guy is like, I'm going to be a police psychologist, and he ended up becoming the avatar of death. I mean, this is not anywhere hey, close. Hey, to it sounds like he's on track to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's really um, it's a challenging campaign, especially for people that have been uh, playing a lot of D and D. Because in D and D, it's really quite basic. It's like, oh, are you the tank? Are you the healer? Are you DPS? Mm-hmm. That's pretty yeah. much your roles. And in this, there's none of that. Like, um, I would recommend having uh, some unarmed ability, a little bit of firearm ability, um, and, and then just various skills. I mean, uh, um, our language is going to come up from time to time, they do. Uh, but the nice thing about this, this, um, uh, campaign is that literally anything can come up 
Well, and that's if, also if, I, if I stick to what I'm used to or I know, then I'd be making a a copy of a sort of D and D character, I suppose. That that would, would you would you grow as a player sticking with the usual? I I wouldn't know, but I think <laughs> as this would be my test character, it would help me familiarize. So you know I'm putting one foot out of the comfort zone, not jumping out. If you, you get my, you know what I would recommend trying is make a character based on yourself and all the shit that you know. Oh. But obviously, you may you may have uh, your character may have skills you personally don't, or they may be like a lot better at some of the skills than you are because you've got extra points. Yeah, well, I, points goes a long I would have said then, if I have to base this character on myself, I'd be left with a thousand odd points left. So, <laughs> Cool. But I mean, yeah, make it an idealized version of, your, of yourself because uh, then you'll know what you know, but also you'll know some extra stuff also because I found that I uh, that that is a very uh, comfortable character to play, but then you can kind of um, you grow into it. Um, as far as all of my gaming stuff, everything that uh, goes on in my games is very long term stuff. Uh, until until somebody's played their character five or ten sessions, I really don't feel like they they have necessarily gotten into their character. Stuff, which is different than a lot of people these days who are playing one shots. Yeah. You know, well, um, if I was to build an idealized version of myself mm-hmm. in this, I would be very mechanical, I suppose you would say, as okay. I'm an engineer. So Okay. Well now um, one of one of the downsides of pretty much all gaming is that you are going to be limited by what the GM knows. So if you're like, I'm an engineer, chances are great you know a ton more about engineering than I do. And so if you're like, I want to design a new water pump logo, and I'll be like, give me an engineering role. And you'll be like, but there's a lot more that goes into it. And I'll be like, I have no idea what that is. Give me an engineering role. It's my ability to convince you. (laughs) (laughs) Partially, partially. but okay, so you've got you've got a character concept. You could even like if you have a lot of overflow points, you could put some of that into what kind of character you play in the D and D type of setting if you wish. Although, honestly, part of what I regard as my job is getting players retrained from the D and D mindset. People that uh, come in with a D and D mindset into a campaign like this, which is a lot more complex than the typical D and D campaign. It makes them fucking crazy. They're like, but this was a good guy. Well, now he's fucking with us. I've forgotten who we were supposed to go in the airport, pulling out a 70-page filled notebook and going, hold on, I've got it here. And he tells you the guy's name from eight sessions ago that, you know, this comes up as a vital clue. And yeah. the airport's like, yeah, yeah, I got that. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck is going on? You know? So yeah, it's it's a complex campaign, but the rules are simple once you well, I can guarantee this, Jay. Once you play launch, you'll be like, oh fucking simple rules. Especially if you're an engineer. I'm assuming you have basic math, which is all you really need to operate this. Yeah. There's no books you need to buy, none of that shit. There's no charts you didn't need to look at. You're like, I made my roll under half, Logan, because I can divide thirty and two quickly off the top of my head. This puts me ahead of some of your other gamers. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. Uh, for the... If I'm going by the sheet now... Uh, okay. Uh, for the, the sheet. Uh, I think it's not the skill points, but the... I guess stat points. Okay, you're looking at the willpower, learning, essence, sanity? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I curious um exactly how often and how they would be used because uh, from what i've seen it's um it's <laughs> sanity is a bit ambiguous about what it's no meant problem. to do well hold on before we get going you're already using the beat sheet cool yeah um this is not going to be the pretty sheet that the other one is just to let you know um it- 
but I, as I'm used to working in Excel and things, so it's okay. it's nice for a quick reference, especially yeah. because it's all laid out. Oh, it's okay. a non-combat skill. Uh, let me just look it up in alphabetical order. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this is my thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me let me run through what the uh, different stats are and stuff. Um, yes, I, I suspect this will be a useful video for people. Uh, willpower is mm, pretty much uh, what what it says on the tin. It's how much mental oomph you have, and that comes up for a lot of uh, different stuff. Um, by the way, uh, part of the thing of this campaign that you will quickly find is the players are trying to figure out why the game world is as it is. Right. Uh, exploration so, is a huge deal in this. Not just for like, oh, there's a, this over there, but why in the fuck does this happen? This doesn't happen in the real world. Why does it happen here? So willpower. Also, willpower is your hit points. So the more willpower you've got. Now, all of your stats, as you can see in the red boxes there, they all start at 10 except for yeah. sanity, which we'll get to in a second. Learning is a fucking amazing stat. Um, willpower is easy to build up during the game. Learning is also easy to build up. Uh, your learning stat, whatever that is, is your base, unless the base is higher. Like, for example, pistol is a base of 20. Uh, if you have, like, a learning of 15, then your base at shooting a pistol is still 20. But if the base is zero, like for example, fast draw pistol, your base, since your learning is 15, is now 15. Okay, so essence. Essence is your, your mojo, your magical stuff. Essence is kind of a bitch to build up compared to the others. But um, it, makes, it, it makes a difference uh, if your character gets spells or when they get spells. Unlike D&D, &D, everybody can get spells. You'd be wearing metal armor, wielding two pistols, and casting fucking spells in this game. That... <laughs> you can, you, you can literally, there are literally uh, lots of spells, and uh, um, if you have a shitty essence, that's okay. If you have a good, because your point is in Yeah. Uh, last one's your sanity. For each point you put into that, you get five sanity points. And that's pretty much your mental uh, balance. Um, are you crazy? If so, how crazy, et cetera. Um, just, yes. Yeah, you, you don't want to start crazy. If, you're, if your sanity ever gets to zero, you've lost your character. It's now an NPC. Oh, so it's, uh, it's like a pseudo death state. Generally, if you do good guy shit, you gain sanity because you're helping people and all that. If you go around murdering people, you're going to lose sanity because you're a murderer. And so... Yeah, and I've seen on the post that uh, you don't like murderers or party killers. So... Yeah, this is not a good game to PvP in, but the rest of the world is so fucking detailed and shit like that, there's no good reason. There's always somebody out there who needs to kill it. <laughs> and so yeah, I'm sure you can go find them. Oh yes. Well, so as for my for the rest of the skills, um, you're also putting the the points into the green boxes, same as before. But uh, under the points allocated and stuff like that, and then it shows like how many. For example, if you were to uh, have your skill total be a 20% in fast draw slug weapon. Example. Uh, under the red box, the points allocated, it would show six. That's how many of your 2,000 initial skill points you used to buy that. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So. Uh, I'm guessing the under fast draw pistol and fast draw sling, it's heavy weapon? You just put HY weapon on the sheet. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, it'd be heavy weapon and then fill in the blank. Like uh, right. mounted, mounted machine gun, mounted rocket launcher, rocket launcher, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but honestly, it, again, um, you might find, uh, or actually in this campaign, you will find like a skill like, say, empathy, so much more useful than rifle. 
because uh, not every character needs to die. And not all problems are solved with violence. Well, no, it's, it, you, you'll, you'll use empathy uh, pretty much on a daily basis because that's dealing with humans and shit. Um, some skills that are good to take. Um, pretty much, I would pick like a firearm um, and a held weapon. Uh, now, this is a pretty simple system. So the smaller the weapon, the less damage it does. In real life, knives are fucking nasty. You can fucking kill somebody with a knife without yes. any real problem, or even an ice pick. In this game, you're looking at like a D4 damage as opposed to sword that does D8. Yeah. Simple system, right? Yeah, you got to balance it somehow. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the hit points, humans have between 10 and 20. Because 20 is as high as your stat can get. Uh, is armor used in this game? It is, but it's weird. Uh, what armor would do is, let's say, uh, there's two kinds here, magic or non-magic. You get non-magic armor, it doesn't matter if it's leather, plate, chain, whatever, it doesn't matter. It reduces the die size by one. So if somebody hits you with a sword and step D8, they do a D6. If you got magic on top of normal, then it would reduce it one more die. So now you're down to a D4. Uh, what about ammo? Pardon? Ammo for guns. Oh, ammo. Yeah. As long as you put some in, it's all good. Um, oh, so I, I'm just wondering if I'd like to restock ammo, or is it just magically? Oh no, you have a shooting gun. Um, the the rule the rule with guns is if the GM ever says how many rounds do you have left, and you can't instantly answer. The answer is zero. The go the quick fast draw pistol because I'm guessing that would give me in D and D terms some kind of initiative bonus in combat. Yeah, the, the um, actually what, what it does is in this in the system, if you don't have fast draw or if you're not trying to roll it uh, and you go round one, what do you do? I pull out my gun. That's your, you're done. And round two, what do you do? I shoot somebody. So yeah, it, it, having fast draw is helpful, but if you know that shit is coming up that's going to be bad and you pull out your gun ahead of time, like, I think I might be shooting somebody soon. I'll pull out my gun and just hold it near my leg that you've got around me fast draw. Right. I'm going to say the word pacifist, but I'd uh, probably play the more... Boring as shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd, I'd probably play fighting. the more support role character. Well, uh, what I always tell people to do is pick up a uh, held weapon, a uh, little bit of natural weapons, because I mean, picking up unarmed or grapple, or possibly martial arts, this is not a huge point expenditure. And if you pick up like pistol, uh, and then some sort of weapon, held weapon, um, then if combat time comes, you're not sitting there with your finger in. Yeah, uh, and on natural weapons, uh, I see that luck is listed. Yes, I, I would personally recommend like the dexterity, luck, strength, constitution. Those are all wonderful stats. Uh, they may eventually become bold faced, but they're new uh, because I've redone the way stats work a couple years, a year ago, something like that, and for this new campaign. So, yeah, those, those are all good in my opinion. But their base is really high, so if you don't start with them, eh, you know, you've still got a decent base. So what would what would luck do? Uh, like for example, if, if somebody walked in the store and say, I need a Coleman lantern and it wasn't a camping store, I'd be like, I don't know if they sell that. Give me a luck <laughs> right. roll. Right. Great. Yeah, they just happen to have them, you know, you can buy them there. So, right, if, so uh, you know. Yeah, I'm putting 35 points into that. <laughs> it's, it's never a bad thing to be lucky. So um, on points allocated, I've put 35 in. Then I add the base, which puts me up to 60, which is the maximum well, I can make on character gen, right? When you, when, you put, when you put them in, if you put it into the green box and you type in 60, then it automatically in the red box shows 35. And if you go up to your remaining skill point box near the stats at the top, that tells you exactly how many points you have left. 
This is the beauty of the peat sheet. It computes it for you. However, I've discovered that if you accidentally put something in the red box, then hit delete, then you've gotten rid of the formula that used to be in there. And yeah, which is what I just it. did. So I just had to retype 35 in. Luckily, it's still deducted. So. <laughs> oh, cool. Cool. So, yeah. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, I would quickly go through just to make sure that you uh, do it to all the bold faced shit and max out probably, all the bold stuff, is it? Yeah, I put them all at sixty. You you're not gonna you're not gonna complain that you did that. I guarantee it. You're not gonna go, wow, that was a waste of points having sprinting when that thing is chasing me. Oh or fuck, not spend fifty five on empathy. Jesus. I don't like talk to people in real life, let alone <laughs> Well, empathy is uh, getting getting some of their baseline reactions. Like I've studied um, uh, body language, uh, neuro linguistic programming, um, facial uh, tics, uh, tells, shit like that. So I use that a lot in the campaign. Right. Um. Oh, right. Yeah. Never mind. It uh, factors in my. Um, Your learn. Yes. My learning. Spot hidden. Right, I guess spot hidden and find. It's got uh, mm -hmm. two subsections: feel yes. and smell and taste. Yes. Uh, can you? You can uh, put points into those if you wish. Right, but does like how do they work? Are they separate skills, or do they get added on, or separate skills? Separate skills. Um, they come up less often, but because it's part of your senses, why isn't listen there? I don't fucking know. But because it's part of your senses, um, people would ask for them to be in there, and so I stuck them in there. This right. this game has been going on for at least two decades, and so it's it's uh, and thousands of playing hours. Yeah. Well, well, I uh, sunk four hundred and twenty five points, so. That's me just maxing out all the basic plus luck. <laughs> Groovy. Yes, uh, one guy forgot to take swimming. and He was not a happy bunny. Now, um, okay, so then, uh, oh, don't forget, when you're, when you're picking your other skills, because a lot of people forget about this and then uh, are unhappy later, uh, in the after non-combat skills, the next section is writing skills. Yeah, that's for anything that isn't listed specifically. If you want Dutch masters painting lore, you can put it in there. Oh, okay. So you can make your own skills. Totally. Uh, again, the question is how often will it come up? Like for example, in one of the campaigns, uh, fire investigation came up fairly often, or ballistics, or serology. Or whatever those because I was running a CSI type type campaign, um, so those skills got used often enough. And what what you think you're going to use and what what you're about? If anything that's got a line after it, that's a fill in the blank thing, like perform, and that's got a line. So if you want to have perform, say interpretive dance, you can fucking buy that in this campaign by God, and it may even come in useful at some point. I'm curious is, should I just max out X amount of skills or should I try to put a bit of points in everything? Well, then, then you've gotten into the hobbyist versus do it as a living. Like in this game, if you, um, oh, by the way, all your skills can go up. I don't know if I mentioned that, but they can all go up. Yeah, due to learning or something, right? Kind of. I'll explain that in a second, but there's three different levels generally of skill. Like if you've got a 30 percent-ish or so, you're considered a hobbyist. Uh, if you make it, hey, if you don't, if you've got 60, then that's considered do it as a living. 90 percent is kind of an expert. The way that the skill rolls work is, let's say uh, you've got 60 percent in spot hidden. Uh, we use roll 20, and so in the roll 20 dice thing, uh, you roll a percentage, and if you get a 60 or less, generally speaking, you've made your skill roll. If you roll over that, it's a fail. There's also some extra stuff with oh. making critical or fumble, but 
Uh, that's just generally how it is. Uh, if it's a really hard thing, like uh, you, you're trying to see somebody in a reflection of a fucking uh, shined metal thing, you might be at like half or negative 30, which if you got 60, either way is 30. But if you make that, uh, now if you make your skill, then you put a little tick next to the skill. And since you're using a spreadsheet, I have no idea how you do it, but you put a little tick next to the skill. I can probably insert the symbol. Oh, Great. Right. And at the end of the game session, uh, when you're rolling to see if your skill goes up, all you have to do is fail the skill roll. So if you've got 60 and you roll a 61 or higher on your percentage dice, that means it'll go up by a D6. If you roll 60% or lower, it doesn't go up and you erase the tick either way. So the lower you've got the skill, the easier it is to increase. And the higher it is, the harder it is to increase. That, I think that's one of the hardest things for new players in the system is you can literally make whatever fucking weird shit you wanted. The only yeah. thing you can't start with is spells, but they're pretty easy to get, especially since the air players have been in the campaign for a while and they've learned some spells so you can get them to teach you spells. And if you had a high teaching and some spells, because your skills go up fast enough in this where you can't teach somebody a different skill, but you can teach them spells. There's such a variety of different character types in this that you really can't go wrong. Um, pretty much just spending your skill points is, uh, is one of those things that it may take you a while and then you'll, you'll question your sanity. And then you'll go back and you'll go, oh, do I really need this? Because I want the extra points in this area thing. And how useful is the skill and all that? But honestly, um, with with the free rewrite and stuff, I wouldn't worry hugely about it. Something else that I recommend uh, for people to do is after you make your character, um, put it into some format where people can look at it easily and stick it up on the HC boards. Earlier, you mentioned uh, dexterity, strength, and constitution. Yes. What would they be used in situation-wise? Um, let's see. Dexterity. Dexterity is dex maneuver and dodge. So, um, if if uh, something too big to parry, because parry is a different skill. Parry is a, a totally separate yeah, skill. Than sword I, I've I, I've taken my unarmed parry fist Great. block. So good. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if something too big to fist block, like a tree is falling on you uh, because somebody else pushed it onto you, you can't really fist block a tree. So that's a, a dodge roll right there. Uh, so, or if you're, if you're like, I want to go over and punch this guy in the head and I'll be like, well, yeah, but there's three people already over there and they're not just standing stationary as you see in D&D on their chessboard of fucking combat. In real life, people move around, combat swirling yeah. all the time. So that would might you might spend an entire round doing your maneuver roll to get into a good position to next round punch this guy in the head. All right. Uh, and then strength, strength is pretty much your brute force. Uh, you get if your strength gets up to eighty, you get a damage bonus. Uh, go if you're using uh, some sort of hand weapon or punching or whatever, you go up to the next bigger die size. Um, constitution and endurance is like, uh, I want to hold my breath longer instead of breathing in seawater because I fucking can't make my swimming roll today. You know, that, that's when that comes in. And yes, that's right. happened. To, we have some characters that become hydrophobic, I'm afraid. Did you have any questions on any of the skills? There's a lot of uh, skills that you're not going to see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm rolling down to the list right now. I'm just uh, looking through the missile weapons and stuff. Um, I, I, earlier you said uh, your equipment is basically randomized. Well, I would say very, very temporary is a good way to describe it. Don't plan on having any equipment when you get it. Don't plan on holding on to it. Um, some of the players have been getting very clever and they've been making different uh, equipment caches in different zones. So I'm like, hey, you fuckers got it. Okay, good. And they're like, yeah, we're going to go fucking dig up these these things here that we've hidden before, you bastard. And I'm like, good. Hey, give me a luck roll, see if it's still there. Yes, it is. I got a fucking 98 luck because I have to use this all the goddamn time. You know? uh, 
say in your example, you had to uh, follow the money trail. Sure. Is that check done by a single party member or is it a group effort? I, it, uh, that, would, that would be called supporting somebody else. So what would happen is, let's say uh, you've got three people who didn't put anything into their accounting and one person who did put something into their accounting. Generally speaking, the three people all try to support the one. So they all try their accounting role skill. And it, let's assume one of them makes it, then the guy who's doing the actual role gets plus 5% temporarily onto a skill for it. But if somebody fumbles theirs, which seems to happen quite often, then it gives them a nice negative 10% as a fuck you. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. But it, it, it is possible to support other people. Right. Gunsmithing lets you make guns. Uh, also, it allows you to clear jams and stuff like that. Right. And jerry rigging is kind of lets you bypass some parts or make some parts out of scraps. Uh, yeah, it's, it's your MacGyver ability. So if I'm in, like you said, we go to a different zone and I don't have a gun, I could pick up some scrap metals, make two rolls and actually have a gun with me. Well, you would, you would jury rig something that would be really super dangerous to fire, and then you'd need chemistry to make gunpowder, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, I wouldn't I, – having, having some sort of like uh, – for example, if you're always concerned about having a weapon, I would take club because the world is full of clubs. And it starts with a take, nice sorry? face. Club. Under club. held weapons, club slash brawling. That's called pick up anything, and it is now a club. You are good with it. Well, it's already got a base of 40, so I might as well put another 20 into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, club brawling block parry is also a nice one to have if, if you're into clubs. So that's, that's, your, that's your fucking no weapon thing, you know. Um, you could even take uh, martial arts, uh, since you have to specify for uh, different things, if you want to take martial arts club. Basically, uh, what that does is it doubles the amount of rolls you need to make each round, but let's say you've got a large club of some sort and you're doing D8 damage because you picked up like a chair, but you have martial arts also, so then you roll uh, your martial arts, and if you make the martial arts, then your uh, club damage goes from D8 to D10. Of course, you could fail your martial arts and then you're still at the eight, or you could fumble your martial arts, which means your entire attack is a hilarious fumble, maybe resulting in your pants ripping, the chair self destructing, whatever. I could see bargain being a, used quite a bit. I, the players are really usually very horrible at bargain. I, what, how would you determine the crit zone and the fumble zone? Okay. Um, Let's see, for the crit zone, it's 10% of your skill. So on the number, knock off the ones digit and the tens digit that's remaining, that or less. So if you have a 60 in a skill, it's a six or less. Cool. Uh, now, so if you have a 30, say, in bargaining, like right. I just so happen to have, three or if less. I roll a three or less, I, mm -hmm. I get a crit success. If I roll a 97 or higher, uh, you know, the, the fumble the fumble zone is different because doing it that way would mean the lower skill you have, the harder it would be to fumble. So for the fumble zone, knock off the ones digit again and stick and your remaining number, stick a nine in front of in the tens digit. And whatever that number is, is your fumble. So 93 is uh, uh, or higher is a fumble with your bargain. Right. Whereas if you had a 60 in a skill and now it's 96, so you've got less chance to yeah. fumble. I think, yeah. That makes good good sense. And if you roll a 0, zero regardless of your skill, even if it's 137 skill, it's still a fumble because God hates you. <laughs> um, um, there, there is uh, something else in this game that... Uh, is not on the sheet. Uh, basically, I would recommend checking out the P 
PDF of the sheet just to see if there's anything else missing, but because uh, this sheet that you're using was meant for just a skill calculation thing, you can use it for whatever you want, but when the guy made it, that's what he made it for. There's something else called the hero points. You're going to start with, uh, the way hero points work is you, uh, if, if you miss a roll, which is bad reason to spend it, unless it's like a crucial roll, like I'm climbing up the cliffs of insanity and I just failed my climb roll. That's a good time. Basically, the only time good to spend a hero point is when death is on the line. A lot of new players spend them on just stupid shit. It's like, oh, I made my, uh, or I failed my lore Zeppelin skill. I need to make every roll. I'm going to fucking spend a hero point on that. Not recommend. Um, but, or, or if somebody shoots you and is going to cause damage, I'm like, you're going to take eight damage. You can spend a hero point and say he missed by that much. Mm. So, um, you, you start off with some number of those. Oh, I think it's equal to your essence. Ah. But also there's another skill called Conceal, Camouflage, and Hold Up. Ah. Uh, that is hiding shit, whether you're hiding shit under a pile of leaves, hiding your car under a camouflage netting, hiding your pistol on you so that people, like, sleight of hand in this game is under prestidigitation. I also recommend counter surveillance. That is the am I being followed? I, it generally only works well if it's a very small amount of people that are following you, but if you've got a team following you with different vehicles that are trading out spaces and shit, you're fucked. And you're will, will you tell us to roll for counter surveillance or would we have to say, is anyone following us? That is a brilliant question. Uh, it could work both ways. Like generally, if I have to ask you uh, to roll for it, then it's too uh, late. <laughs> yeah, or, or I'll put you like a negative 30 or half skill. Um, but if you go, hey, let's make sure we're not being followed, then I would say, okay, cool. Good idea. Command counter surveillance rule. So are there any passive skills in the game or are they all active? Uh, they're, they're all pretty active skills, honestly. Um, although sometimes I, I, I will have, I will ask for somebody to roll something. Like, for example, if I know people are having a conversation that may be of interest nearby, I will say, give me a listen roll. And then you may get part of that conversation and stuff. Other, other skills that are, uh, they don't come up often, but when they do, you're happy you've got them are things like scuba and uh, what was the other one that people are always bitching about? Parachute. Yeah, because those have come up. They don't come up often, but you can always tell who doesn't have parachuting skill when they start blowing through hero points before the ground comes up to meet them. I, anything that you're not sure on, I would recommend if you've got the points, Try it at hobbyist because uh, that way, if it's really important and you need to spend a hero point or whatever, you've got a decent chance of making it. So one in yeah. three chance, roughly. Well, I, I'm either trying to put 30 or 60 points into things I think are going to be useful. Uh, oh, first aid comes at a base of 30. That's nice. Mm -hmm. um, for that, you need like basic first aid stuff, bandages, possibly splints, shit like that. Medicine is, um, uh, you need a hospital operating table, shit like that. And, uh, and the linguistics, that's uh, just how well I can understand people? Or? Linguistics in this campaign is identify whatever foreign language you're babbling at you in. Uh, to actually understand them, uh, go down to the write-in skills slash languages thing and write down whatever languages you are wanting to learn. Those all start with a base of whatever your learn is. Uh, lock law. Lock law is generally used to, uh, uh, that's the difference between knowing like about a, a six pin tumbler from master lock versus, you know, uh, eight pin cylinder lock from Yale. Um, 
generally you can uh, roll that to support your own lock picking skill. You can support yourself with different skills. Oh. If they're I'll super just, related. I'll just put 30 in that then. Um, don't, don't forget anything with a big line after it. It's a fill in the blank thing like Bote. Yeah, I haven't taken oh. any of those, so that's. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep um, in mind, it, it's literally impossible to fuck up your character right now because after you play the first time, if you're like, oh, well, I'll get in on some more of this, then you can rewrite your character from the ground up and be like, wow, we all know what I need now. I need this and this and this. Yeah, well, well, I definitely need the 60 points in parkour. Well, for parkour, don't forget all the prereqs uh, at 60 uh, or higher. There's a oh, all of them need 60 or higher. Uh, acrobatics, uh, I've got at 30, which I need to put to 60 then. Uh, also, parkour flight. is not as quite as cool as in real life, just so you know. Parkour is not the solution for everything. No, uh, renting. Mm, how's that? Hmm? How's that? Like, how's it? Uh, how have you moved it? Uh, basically, a, if, from time to time, it might be like, give me a jump roll as opposed to a parkour roll, or give me, you know, um, in real life, it's parkour is a very OP type of skill. Um, but yeah, it, it comes up to handy. If, if everybody chasing somebody down has parkour and the guy being chased doesn't, he's probably fucked. You know, unless he's just super sprinting, you know. Under the prereqs, it says acrobatics, I've got 60. Climb, I've got 60. Sprint, I've got 60. And jump, I've got 60. I can't find the skill long distance run. I think that's a, uh, it's under running. Uh, it's right above sprinting, running long distance. Oh, there we go. But also keep in mind, because you're wanting to do different things, I've tried to do parkour at least once. A lot of people like to yell parkour before rolling it for whatever reason. Their characters are yelling parkour. Hardcore parkour. <laughs> yeah. Um, but because of the nature of these skills, um, if you do the parkour and, and you get a check in it, then I would ignore parkour after that and go, I'm going to go for a running long distance to chase this guy down because you want to check in that also. See what I mean? Because yeah. you want to get as many different checks as possible. Uh, yes. People so always I, look at this I don't language. start in any languages? You start with uh, English as a native language. Uh, you're, ne you're not going to need to roll on it, but everything else will be at your learn skill. All right. Uh, I'll save uh, some points for that. Uh, is there any languages I should pick up? Or? My personal opinion as a world traveler is that there are the big five languages, which are always useful. Uh, those are English, Russian, Arabic, French, and Spanish. You, you wouldn't put Mandarin on your list? Mandarin is a good one for a number of people. However, in real life, whenever I encounter Chinese people, either they speak English or their tour guide does because Chinese are notorious for being in huge fucking groups following the tour guide. Yeah. Safe crack, and I probably need 60. Um, now, keep in mind, real life safe cracking, you're looking at at least an hour. At least an hour. Yeah. Possibly with drills. Et cetera, drills, chemicals, shit like that. Chemistry is always a good one for doing I, that stuff. But I did put chemistry into that. So you're saying instead of me save crack and just use thermite? Well, it's, uh, using thermite is a part of safe cracking because otherwise people who aren't familiar with it usually end up liquefying whatever's inside the safe because by God, they can use their demolition skill to get into the safe. They're just doing it badly. <laughs> But if you didn't see the, the problem with playing a deep type character is there's a lot of different shit. Security system floor, safe cracking, lock picking, lock picking, electronic, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I've tried to take a lot of them, but uh, yeah, the point to drain is quite severe. I, I, would, I would recommend personally out in Streetwise, 
Streetwise comes up a lot surveillance, uh, especially because anybody who doesn't do surveillance before doing a job is obviously an amateur. Uh, but what what I recommend is for like uh, a lot of your skills, just doing a 30 and then trying to support other people is a great way to do it because then it's not all on you and you can build up your skills. Uh, a tracking and trapping. They can uh, be super useful if you're out in the wilderness. So it's it wouldn't be like urban tracking. Yeah, unfortunately, unless the guy's got like muddy feet or something, uh, tracks are not really left on pavement or concrete. I, I, I was thinking more if, like in an example you used before, where if we're parkouring and we're running after each other, would I be able to tell like which way he went or? Not unless there was something, like if there was sand or something on the rooftop, and it was scuffed, maybe, or if they if their sneaker left a scuff, but you know, it's uh, when you're not dealing with soil and stuff, you, then it's really super hard to track. Uh, yeah. Basically, you're looking for change. Changes recently made in the environment, and that's really hard because the environment, like concrete and stuff, doesn't really change. And a special thing with languages, if you have it at sixty percent or higher. If you uh, are during an adventure and you make your, for example, Latin roll, for the rest of the adventure, you're fine with Latin. You don't need to make any more rolls. But if you've got it less than that, every time something's said or you, you need to understand it or you want to say it, then roll, 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 roll. And also, I think that you'll find that unlike D&D, &D, where you get like the cookie cutter, like this is your character. Characters in this, very individual. Mm. Uh, no but two it, characters have to be the same. It sounds like they're all going to end up the same. The longer you play a character, the more points in the skills they will get. So in the end, all the character sheets are going to look the same. I, I cannot agree with that, um, because a lot of the players get very, very different uh, skills over time. And they take a great deal of pride in developing new weird skills. Like one guy has a uh, skill rope, rope use and knots. Uh, no, it's knots and pulleys or something like that, where he's dealing with fulcrums and pulleys and shit as a skill. He has that specific skill. One guy picked up six or seven new skills that were all write ins in one game session. Because he had to keep making these stupid, he was trying to do some insane shit and he kept making it rolls at his learn. So I would say that a, a lot of, like, for example, the, the bold face skills, I agree. You're eventually going to have 60 or 80% of all the bold face shit. But the other shit, maybe, maybe not. Um, you may pick up, uh, like, for example, if you take a uh, heavy weapon machine gun. You're probably the only person in the game who's got that skill. Will it come up if you can get hold of one? Yes. Um, but there's, I think the outlier skills are huge. Every everybody's going to have at least ten or twenty different skills that nobody else will have, unless they're sticking very much to just what's on the sheet and not trying anything weird. Forgery. Forgery is good depending on what kind of forgery itself that you're wanting to get into um there are many different kinds of forgery mm. like for example if you want to forge us dollars then you have to be good at making the plates or you'd be the guy who's good at making the paper or you'd be the guy who's good at making the uh the holograms and stuff that go into it so other than just saying forgery which would be good at forging everything I couldn't just be forgery money. I'd need to be forgery money specific. It depends on how good you want to be at it. For example, uh, somebody who's very specific in the skill is always going to have better results than somebody who has more general skill. For example, um, if you were to take a survival Arctic and then you're in a tropical forest, you'll still have some of the basic survival things like you get shelter, water, food, and stuff. Uh, but you're going to be light years behind uh, the guy who's got survival tropics. 
Um, if you take like forgery money, then you're never going to know what you're going to need until you've got time to sit there and look at their money and experiment with different shit and all that to come up with the right kind of things. Is this printed with plates? Is it uh, pouring in coins? How, how are they doing it? You know, uh, there's also something else called um, climatization in this game where, for example, Streetwise. Streetwise is knowing who to talk to to get various illegal goods and services. Um, if you first go into a place and you've been there for less than a month, because I assume that the, the characters have some life outside of the game, and so the, if, if they're the kind of person who's good at Streetwise, they'll go hang out with criminals and other undesirable types, or at least find out who's who in the world. But after, like, before a month, you're going to be at a large negative on your Streetwise, like negative 30 or half, whichever is better for you. But after a month, you'll be considered climatized to that area. And so then you can say, okay, I, I'm going to go out and look for a guy who can sell me illegal weapons, for example. And then you'd be rolling a streetwise at full to find that guy. Yeah. Well, I, I have seven skill points remaining now. So what do I do with the remaining seven? Did you say seven? Yeah. I would dump it into a whimsical skill, and then you'll have learn plus seven, so 21 or whatever, and just some whimsical skill. What, would a, what does appraisal do? Appraisal gives you a baseline. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is another climatization thing because you guys are dealing with very different economies and shit, but it gives you an idea of how much something is worth. If you're not acclimatized, like it depends on where your character's from. I'm guessing modern day, I'm getting a modern day kind of feel from them. So I would give it to you in like euros or something. I'd be like, you think this is worth about 200, 250 euros, something like that. And you're like, but I'm in this fucking weird caveman thing. How many fucking Grunthars think this is worth? I don't know, you just got here. You just discovered they use fucking Grunthars. You don't have any, you'd like some. But you think it's worth 200, 250 years. God damn it. You know, that kind of thing. Come up with a name, at least the first name, because one of the weird things is everybody is a little fuzzy on their memories. How fuzzy is up to you. Uh, it, you know, can depend on what, what you're going for. I talk to other people and see what's up. Also, again, I recommend posting it up because people might have ideas for you since it's your first character, since you can reallocate points. That's up to you. Uh, Believe me, you're not going to shock anybody with the with the character. They may give you some really good ideas, and they may say, "I wouldn't put points into this, but I would put them into this." You'd be like, "Oh, why?" Because Logan's an idiot. He doesn't know that this skill does anything, but he knows about this skill. And he'll call on that a lot more. For example, starting gear, literally none. I made a Q and A section. I'm going through that right now. See what else is. If you now go to uh, the uh, general board, go to sign up sheet. What I'd recommend is get signed up on the schedule. It's, the closer we get to August, the more people are going to start signing up. How long do the games go for? Uh, generally for four or five or six hours, depending on the players and what's going on. Yeah. But if you decide you like it and the group likes you, sign up for more. If, you, if it's not your thing, then, you know, hey, you tried it out, tried something new. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, the, the thing is, it's like games like this, uh, I uh, have a similar problem like with EVE Online. It's you got so much freedom that the freedom itself is restricting. Mm -hmm. oh, that, I, I know that, that's an oxymoron, but it. Uh... Well, that, that's that's an actual problem that some of the the players have had because um, in the past I've run a lot of uh, linear adventures. Now, not really railroading like you must do this because if the players went off and did their own shit, that's great. But it's like I had definite start and end points. But with these worlds, I've been working on making more of a um, sandbox type thing. And for some of the players, that's great. Like, uh, one of them built a, a Thunderdome type of deal. 
and he was charging a mission because he wanted bum shock fights where they're both wearing like tasers on their fists and fighting each other. You get the homeless people do that and made money off of it because he felt like it. But well, other go for, other, it. Huh? go for it, isn't it? <laughs> if you can make money off something. Exactly. But other players, the uh, concept of the open world sandbox or whatever has fucked with them badly. And they end up just staring at each other, wondering what the fuck is going on. But uh, I would say whenever whenever there's a, a, the question of what to do, explore. Find out shit. Why is shit like it is? That's kind of one of the themes of the campaign. Yeah, this, this is uh, going to be a very different kind of thing for you. Um, yeah. It's... It, yeah. Well, and no, I don't want to give away anything. Yeah, different doesn't mean good or bad. It just means different. Yes. It's up to me how I interpret that. But, you know, a nice change might give me a new point of view. Even if I don't stick with this game, it might give me a different point of view on some of the other games I play. So I agree. I Also, keep in mind when you start, uh, it... it Every zone is very different. To give you an idea of some of the kind of places that they've been in the past, they've done some cyberpunk shit. Uh, they went to a Smurf land. Uh, they went to an Old West ruled by women. Uh, they went to um, okay. a 1950s soap opera. I mean, it's there's a lot of different shit. So when you find the starting thing, don't think, oh, this is always what's up. No, everything's fucking different everywhere. That uh, Old West on. ruled by women sounds like uh, Westworld now, doesn't it? Kind of, kind of. There was, there was some definite uh, uh, things in that, yes. But, um, no, I mean, the, the women were physically taller than men. They dressed in the sensible clothing. Men had the babies, which was really awkward for the PCs. They're like, no, I don't want sex. I'm all right, because they didn't want to get pregnant. Yeah. Oh, it worked for this. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> and they were like, so, no, 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 we're fine. fine. So did the... Uh does the PC's attributes change based on where they go, or is it just the world around them? It's, it's mainly the world around them, although from time to time, uh, some things may change. Like, for example, if I had an avatar world, I don't, you'd be really tall yet. and blue. Oh, yet, yes. <laughs> I, but eventually, I would, I would like it where I had so many zones that to try to describe all of them would take too long, and so... Um, the, the problem I find with this game is it's the freedom of what you can do is uh, what makes it awkward. It's like I okay. can, it's uh, I, I like to have a clear goal in mind, sort of. And it sounds like, from what I've heard so far, that's not exactly the case. It depends if. Um, one of the things I'm trying to build into the different zones is more mission givers, where if the PCs can find those, they can go, what do you need done? They don't have a big exclamation point above their head, but, you know, uh, or another good way to do it is uh, one of the interesting things about this is people shift groups around, like who they play with can shift, like, uh, for example, Let's say on August 9th, uh, Sabaton, who's a new person I've never played with, doesn't show up or drops out or whatever. We have something called sharking, which means that if somebody's available and they're hanging out on the internet, uh, they'll send me a message and they'll go, hey, Logan, if somebody doesn't show up for this session, I'm in. And everybody has till 15 minutes after start time, and if they're not there by then, if somebody else is lurking, sharking, then that that person can get their spot, right? Yeah. And so uh, let's say you weren't sure on what your goal should be and you end up playing with like Chris and Matt, two really experienced players and you said, hey guys, what's going on? And then they told you and you go, what do you need me to do? Like when I'm playing to make shit happen, they might be like, 
we need you to investigate this area because we don't have time to and we need to know what the fuck this guy is up to, for example. That could become your goal, you know, if you're looking for stuff. In other words, the PCs uh, themselves can help you to figure out what you should be doing if you're not clear on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. As, long as, I'm, as long as I'm not thrown into the deep end, I think I should be fine. Even the experienced players feel like they're constantly being thrown into the deep end, which is great because a lot of this game is how well do you react to new shit, new stimuli, new stimuli, all that stuff. It's, it's, meant, to, it's meant to be a hard game. You sound smart, which is a big bonus because dumb people do not do well in this game. It's like, I need to rescue the princess. I forgot her name. I know she's in this castle. There's some bad guy. Or not, I forgot. Those people will not enjoy themselves a lot in this game because this game is more about instead of going straight out of problem, which you can do, but they'll suck up all your hero points and then you'll be weakened for the next thing and all that. You can come at it sideways in a crafty manner. You, you are going to have a much better time, you know. So, is it is it a different zone every session? Or no? I was just wondering because it says uh, uh, on different session days and stuff with the different players. Would it be how often do you change zones? Or? That depends totally on the players. Like uh, one of the zones I made, I made a couple of ways that they can get to other zones, but they may choose to stay in the, the first zone, or they may choose to switch. Now, one of the interesting things that can happen is, like, for example, let's say you play with uh, this Jay Levy guy, and then um, you're in zone A, and then you end up getting into a game with Chris and Matt, and they're in zone C. You may get sucked into their zone go, I don't know where I'm at. And they'll be like, here, take this. This is guns and money and drugs or whatever. And yeah, and you're set up now. Yeah. And you'll be like, I have no idea what's going on. And then yeah. next time you play, you may be back in zone B or A or whatever. Or you could still be in zone C. But right. it's, not, it's not a terrible amount of channel flipping because that'd just be needlessly disorienting. Yeah. Plus, the smart players eventually figured out how to go back to zones they'd already been to, which is, there's a lot of secrets in the campaign. It's kind of like the TV show Lost, except I tried to make this make sense and be explainable. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the fans of that show were fucking unhappy with the writers when they discovered, what about all that other shit? And you're like, I don't know. So in any season, I... Uh, the players generally, unless they start backtracking and like uh, in season two, one of the new players named Jeremy, he's on the schedule a few times. Um, when in his normal group, he was in like two or three different zones over the course of three months of playtime. But during one of the games, he got into a group with a couple of the experienced players. And he was like, so where have you guys been? They were like, well, as a matter of fact, we need to go to some other places. Why don't you come with us? He's like, cool. And then he saw like eight zones or something like that in one session. Because they're just flipping through and going, okay, here we need to get this and this. And then we're going to go over to here and then we need this and this. And he's like, God damn, there's a lot more to this fucking campaign than I thought. I like, <laughs> it sounds like it's um, very complex and interchangeable. Yes. Uh, but the, the good news is that your character will grow in unexpected ways. And um, it's pretty much the, the two main things are your character skills, which if, if you die, they can go down because death is a weird thing I'm not going to cover right now. It's not like dead or D&D &D dead where it's like lose a little con and you're okay. It was a lot of money. Yay. Um, but it's your character skills, and the mo most important part is the, the player knowledge and the player cleverness. Uh, yeah. I reward cleverness and punish the shit out of stupidity. 
No, uh, you get a, a hero. Hero point can either be used as an opponent fails effect, which means that the bad guy who is just clubbing your brains out actually missed, and you can wait until after you hear the damage. It's like, oh, he does twelve points of damage. Well, that would fucking kill me. I'm going to spend a hero point so I don't. Do yeah. Um, or or as a reroll. Um, yeah. But you get. You gain, you can gain uh, hero points. There's even cards that if you hold them till the end of the session, you can gain more hero points. Normally, you, during a normal session, you'll probably get three hero points. Yeah, under 10, the, the more under 10 you've got, the closer to death you are. Of course, death if doesn't you mean hero points, do you die? Or? No. Uh, if you run out of hero points, though, and somebody shoots you, then you're definitely taking the damage. You can't you can't spend a hero point to negate it. In other words. Um, or if you miss your climb roll on the cliffs of the sandy, you're gonna go splat. Can you spend but, your hero points for someone else? No. Uh, uh, if I crept up with when someone was sleeping and with my knife, I just wanted. Yeah. Even even then, it probably you you would get um, you get extra damage, but it wouldn't be a for sure kill. Uh, again, simple system. Yeah, it sounds like most of the stuff that I wanted to know is uh, sort of been answered now. The rest is just down to experience. Yeah, yeah. Usually after somebody's played one session, they've got a pretty good idea of how the game is played. After three sessions, they normally don't have any more questions about how the game is played unless it's something really super rare or specific or whatever. So yeah, not a not a hard not a hard game. I'd rather have a complicated plot than a complicated system. If there's nothing else, then I'm gonna log off, chop this up, and make it into a training video for other people. <laughs> okay, I'll do the best, man. Thank you, Jerry. I trust.